Are you in the middle of a high-end flip and not sure you're going to get the price you thought you'd get? Or maybe you're a new home builder and things have really slowed down and you need new and creative ways to sell. And finally, maybe you've just gotten attached to a property that you'd like to keep and use sometimes for vacations, but don't want all that overhead. Well, there are solutions out there. Co-ownership. I'm Kathy Fedke, co-host of Bigger Pockets on the Market, presented by Fundrise. Co-ownership is an idea that's becoming more and more popular today. You've probably seen ads for Picasso and now Ember Homes is doing the same thing. Most people only use their vacation homes a few weeks out of the year. Instead, you could have several different owners who are using it at different times and sharing the overhead. Now, managing all of that could be a real headache. Who gets what weeks? Do you like your co-owners? How would you manage any issues that happen while people are using the home? And would it be okay to short-term rental the weeks that you have if you're not using it? Would the other owners be okay with that? Well, today I'm going to be interviewing Jeff Lyman, who's a co-owner of Ember Home, which is a shared vacation home company. They have an app that just kind of does all the work for you. And you can own your six weeks or more if you want. And if you're not going to use those weeks, you can short-term rental them. And again, it's all managed for you. Rich and I just did this. We found a really cool property in Park City, actually as part of our development there, Discovery Ridge, right next to the Woodward Action Ski Park. But it's a $2 million property, and that's just too much overhead, too much expense for only a few vacation weeks that we would use it. And then managing it as a vacation rental seems stressful at that price point for us. But then I heard about Ember Homes and I thought, I want to look into this. Turns out they really loved the property. It's unique. It overlooks, again, Woodward. So you can see people from your living room doing flips on the half pipe or major Olympic jumps. It's a very cool scenario. So Ember decided they liked the home too. We get to keep one eighth ownership while selling off the other seven eighths. I won't probably ever meet these owners unless you decide you want to be an owner and then we could I don't know, share weeks together. It's also a really great opportunity for investors who are looking for places to do masterminds because you'd be an owner and there's four bedrooms. One of the bedrooms has four beds. Actually, the house next door would make a great opportunity to have two right next to each other. So a, kind of a fun idea if you want large groups together where you can have the same weeks. So Ember loved the home. We're now in partnership. They're selling off the other seven member units. If you want to find out more about that, you can go visit their website, emberhome.com. Another thing to think about is if you are doing a flip or you're having a house built, there's some profit in there. So you can actually sell the other seven units or five units or whatever, depending on how many weeks you want. And you could actually keep your six weeks for free. Again, if you're able to create that much upside. So Jeff, welcome. Thanks, Kathy. So let's talk about that. Why would it be easier to go through a company like yours or Picasso to manage this for someone versus doing it ourselves? It's kind of the American dream is owning a vacation home, uh, but there's a lot of hassle with that comes with that house. Find the real estate and set up all the infrastructure around it. Who's going to clean it? Who's going to maintain it? If it's a rental property, how are you going to take great care of that? And what we've done is sort of ready-made all of that for buyers and done it in a way where we fractionalize the assets so they don't have to buy the entire property and take all of that risk. So they can get exposure to the asset class of revenue producing nightly rentals without having to take the whole thing. So we'll build or often buy the assets ourselves, fully furnish them and do all of those details, set up the LLC documentation, set up all of the infrastructure to take care of the home and to host your renters and you should you choose to use the house yourself. And then each one eighth owner just buys one eighth of the LLC that owns the home, the lot and the furnishing. So it's really a turnkey way to access that asset class and super simple, especially for a mixed use case where you may want to use it for yourself for a few weeks a year. And you maybe want to rent it the rest of the time to offset your operating costs and kick off a little bit of cash. Each one eighth ownership would get you about six and a half weeks per year in the home every year. So if somebody owns a home or wants to buy a home, they found one that they really like and would like to be able to use it, would like to be able to make short-term rental income when they're not using it, 
but then also not not have to take on all of the weeks um, for that, have other owners who share in the overhead in case it doesn't rent. I mean, nobody wants to own a, a multi-million dollar vacation rental and hope that it's going to cover itself and it doesn't. What would you say to somebody who is thinking about doing that? Would they call you and show you the property and see if it's something that Ember would be interested in? Yeah. So many properties, you know, we just buy and bring onto our website, emberhome.com. And if someone's just kind of searching for that, they can just kind of discover what's on the shelf. But we do have a concept that we call anchor owner, which is kind of like an anchor tenant, if you think about it in the commercial real estate space. Is sometimes we have an owner who just falls in love with a certain property in X, Y, or Z location, but they're just wanting to match their level of ownership with either their budget or their schedule. And co-ownership allows you to do that. You can buy it in eighths, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, et cetera, to kind of match how much of the asset you want to own and how much of the asset that you would want to use. And so yeah, they would just reach out to us and all of our contact information is, of course, on our site. And then we would do an, an evaluation of the home. And if that anchor owner or that anchor ownership group is looking to take down two or three of the eight shares, and it's something that really fits our kind of buy box for what we're looking for, we'll totally jump in and take the risk on the other you know, five or six shares and move that through our own uh, sort of marketing and sales funnel. Folks ask us all the time, do the owners know each other? And by and large, they do not. Uh, you place the asset in the LLC and when the owners are there, it's like their own hotel. And when their guests are there, it's like their own hotel. And then they move out and our cleaning and care infrastructure comes in and readies the home for that next group. And you know the owners often really don't necessarily want to herd the cats of getting the opinions of the other six or seven owners. They just want to enjoy their real estate or have the renters enjoy their real estate when they're there. So it's really been a great model. Can the owner keep their stuff there? Is there usually like a owner's closet? Especially in homes that we've built, we'll create big owner's lockers and they can store their bikes and their stand up paddle boards. And, and if it's an asset that they're using personally, they don't want to have to pack that stuff down for every six or seven times that they come to the home. And so yeah, we do invest at, at every size home having some form of sort of of an owner's locker so you can keep all those personal things there. You don't want to keep having to repack every time you go to visit your vacation home. Okay. Now, the big question is how do you get to choose your weeks? I think we've got a pretty elegant way to do it. And as we've tested it with uh, more and more owners, it really works. So if you think about a, a, a revenue producing asset, time is money. The best weeks are going to rent the best. And so what we do with the eight owners is, is more than a year before the given calendar year kicks off, we hold a draft amongst the eight owners. And we rank the weeks from one to 52, from the you know most peak and most likely to rent for the highest amount to the lowest peak, you know, to the sort of the least likely to rent at sort of the lowest amount. And then the owners uh, sort of draft their way through that. And then their draft picks move around from year to year. Now, if you're a, a fan of fantasy sports, this will sound familiar to you. It's a snake draft. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then whoever had the eighth pick also gets the ninth pick and the seventh pick had the 10th pick and it sort of snakes its way back up. And in a given year, if you're one of those top four picks, you'll get six weeks a year. And if you're one of the bottom four picks, you'll get seven. And that's how we fill out the calendar year. And then that rotates. If you're top four one year, you're going to be bottom four the next year and and so on and so forth. And that's compelling because then each owner has equal access to the best and most rentable and most profitable dates throughout the year. But then too, when an owner goes to sell their one-eighth ownership, they're not selling to someone who essentially is last in line. That buyer who now buys into the LLC has equal standing and equal access to the most rentable and usable dates in the portfolio. And it's been a system that's really worked out well so far, but we'll keep refining and, and and sharpening it as we go. I'm sure people often compare this to a timeshare. Now, how is it similar and how is it different? It is in some ways trying to solve the same problem that a timeshare was trying to solve. How do I match my ownership in, in an asset with my schedule or my budget? But it's a much better solution. As you know, with a timeshare, you don't really own anything. You own a right to use something on a fixed time of the year. And sometimes there's predatory financing and onerous dues. Good luck selling it and good luck selling it and capturing any gains. Yeah. So those are, so good problem, bad solution. What co-ownership offers is specifically using an LLC construct is its true ownership of 12.5% of the LLC for every 1A. And you own that asset and that asset is completely liquid 
to you for whenever you choose to buy it and sell it. And as real estate appreciates, which it has a tendency to do over longer time horizons, the seller of that one eighth of the home and the furnishings associated with it is going to be able to capture those gates. And so it, it truly is ownership and um, ownership that offers flexible use and really kind of fair sort of scheduling. So no one's stuck in a fixed week per year or any of those things. They can really match how and when they use it with kind of what their own personal preferences are. So you'd never have a sense that I'm stuck in this thing. It's like I use the asset for when I want to use it. And often our owners will call us back and say, I want to upgrade in size. I want to downgrade or I want to sell out of the asset entirely. And then we're the brokerage for them in many states or we'll work with partner brokerages in other states. And then that just goes right back onto the, you know, your local listing service and on our website and we'll recommend a price to sell it at and ultimately the owner will choose their price that they wanted to clear at and they're able to capture those gains so fundamentally so different than how a timeshare works i was really shocked to see that you can finance your share so how, how does that work does the llc then get the financing and then the owners just kind of kind of share that payment? Yeah. So this varies from market to market, but the financing is actually extended to the LLC backed by the home itself. And so each of the eight owners can then choose how much of the financing opportunity or potential debt that's extended to that home. Some owners just want to pay cash. They don't want to finance. Others want to take advantage of the financing opportunity. And we kind of cap that up to 70% kind of loan to value. So it keeps it really flexible. And in you know, full uh, transparency with Ember, that financing opportunity varies from market to market as we work with different banks in different markets where we have properties to date. I mean, we're in Newport Beach, California, Park City, uh, Bear Lake, which is the Caribbean of the Rocky Mountains. Kathy, if you have not been there, it's a lovely place. And then uh, places like Southern Utah, St. George, the Gateway to all the national parks, et cetera. Yeah, such a cool concept. Okay, let's say, well, how are you different than Picasso, uh, which I think came out first and has a lot of marketing? From my impression, just seems to be extremely high priced. I think, you know, I've seen one eighth shares be $2 million. <laughs> so like, wow, okay, that's, uh, I wonder if you can finance that. But yeah, how, how are you different? First, we're comparable in that we're both believers in a true ownership in the LLC construct. And so that's really, I think, the modern and intelligent way to call on uh, you know, luxury and vacation real estate going forward. Where we're somewhat different is we offer two types of co-ownership homes. One we call Ember Limited, which is really a, a home that's exclusive to an owner and its guests. And then we also have um, a whole line of, of products and homes that we call Ember Flex. And that's flexible. Owners can sort of use it personally when they want to, and then they can rent out their time when they're not. As far as my understanding goes, uh, that latter option, this produce revenue from your time when you're not there via night rental is not something that Casa is currently doing. We offer both because we really have both buyers. You know, we have some folks that they 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 really are they're investing in this kind of family cabin. This is an heirloom for them. They don't want renters in it, and you know they plan to use most, not all, of their six and a half weeks a year. But they they just have a really defined and specific purpose for it. Or the home itself is not located in a in a designated nightly rental zone, but it may be a neighborhood or an HOA that does allow co ownership as an ownership construct for its homes. And then we have obviously those who are like, hey, if I'm not at that house, I want it kicking off revenue when I'm not there and sort of maximizing my return on investment. And so we learned very early on in our development as a company that we really needed to offer both options. I know there's been a little pushback, obviously a lot of pushback on short-term rentals, but now we're starting to see that with shared vacation homes, which surprised me. I'm in Malibu. I'm in an area where we we do have these kinds of properties, $50 million properties that you can own an eighth share of <laughs> or an eighth unit of. And the locals don't like it. So we're starting to see more pushback. Again, it surprises me because wouldn't you rather have, instead of one family owning a vacation rental, now you've got eight families owning it so you don't have eight properties tied up in, in Malibu? I mean, this is a big problem in, in these resort towns where 50% of the properties are vacant because they're vacation homes and nobody ever uses them. You know, I know that you believe you're doing good for society, right? But there's pushback. So what, what are you seeing out there? We certainly nationwide are in a housing crisis. We just have not sort of built and that dates all the way back to 
2008. And so, yeah, by consolidating eight owners in maybe, uh, instead of them having to go out and buy some condo at somewhere between 500000 and a million dollars or something like that that sits vacant for 44 weeks out of the year and gathers dust, this idea that you know, you'd place eight owners into an asset that, that really matches the amount of time they would use a second home in the first place, you know, five, six, seven weeks a year, and then leaves those other kind of median priced homes for local workers and residents, kind of like the carpool lane, you know, instead of everyone just driving an empty car, you know, just you and four other, five other, six other empty seats, let's pool together and leave more of the lanes available for kind of the rest of the road. Well, think of it like an HOV lean for owning a house, you know, Emperor homes are on average occupied 80 to 90% of the time, which isn't just great for the housing dynamic. It's also great for local businesses because I mean, certain vacation towns really have swings of when everyone comes into ski or everyone comes into the lake season, and then they can have some really bare months during those off seasons. And when you take a co-ownership approach and you have a much higher occupancy rate, that's more folks patronizing your local restaurants, local shops, et cetera. And then help it can help to kind of prop up those particularly seasonal towns. We think it benefits all of those fronts, but they're, they're, as it is still a new asset class and a newer concept, we're certainly still in the evangelizing phase, getting everyone on board. I think Park City actually is one of the places that is wanting to ban it. I'm so happy that we, you know, that we're going to be partnering with you on a property I really wanted because what am I going to do with a four bedroom house in Park City? I don't have little kids anymore. I'll have lots of grandkids soon. I just found out I've got, I got another one on the way. Can't wait. But, you know, I, I really saw this opportunity because it's in our development. I kind of know which lots are prime, whereas the, the general market couldn't see that. But we were able to tie up a lot with just beautiful views of Woodward. And I wanted it, but I didn't want to have such a big house. And we're going to co-own that with you. So I'm, I'm so excited. And what makes it work is that it's just outside the Park City. So we're able to do it. You know, are is there anyone sort of lobbying for this so that cities understand how it's actually a benefit to them in some ways? There is. And we're working at, at both kind of the city, uh, county, and then also at the state level, uh, both in the state of Utah and at and at other states, just to make sure that the certainly lawmakers and policymakers have fully understand all the advantages that co-ownership brings. And I sort of enumerated those before and making really, really good progress. There will be resistance. There always is to new concepts. And by and large, the benefits in our estimation far outweigh any kind of perceived downsides. One kind of anecdotal story. Whenever we bring on a home, if it's an existing home, that one that we're not building, I personally, as the co-founder of the business, will knock the doors of neighbors' homes. And I just introduce the concept to them. I think there's a little bit of trepidation. Wait, wait a minute, I'm going to have eight neighbors and how's that going to work? And I, I give them my personal cell phone number. And I said, if you have any issues with these owners, I want to hear about it. And we'll work closely with those owners to make sure that they're sort of great neighbors as, as kind of we would expect. And we recently had a home that we opened in Southern Utah that was in kind of one of these local parade sort of showcases. And we had 16,000 people walk through the home. It was stunning. It was absolutely beautiful. Wow. And- 16,000? Um, 16,000 16, people. Yeah, it's huge. Um, and the home had sold out a year ago, but a lot of the local, you know, locals come to, you know, see it and it's beautifully decorated and the architecture and all that stuff. I had multiple neighbors of our owners who I had met from knocking the doors come and talk to me. And I said, oh, I remember you You and I met when we opened X, Y, or Z house. And I said, how has it gone? And they said, you know what? We were a little pensive at first, but our neighbors have been great. Not only like super respectful, but we've actually loved getting to know them. And one elderly couple said, I just love hearing the kids at the pool. It makes, it brings a youthfulness to our neighborhood. So that was really gratifying. And I, you know, that's like any new concept, you're going to get a little hesitation at first as people are sometimes are a little bit pensive about the unknown. But I think as we keep kind of plowing through that, we're going to make a lot of believers around co-ownership. Fantastic. Well, Jeff, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom here and uh, just love the co-ownership model. It's the future. Thanks, Kathy. Who knows? Maybe we'll be co-owning our own homes at some point and getting lots of variety, living in different places. All right. Thank you so much. If you want to find out more, just again, reach out to emberhome.com or me at Kathy Fetke on Instagram. Thanks so much for joining me here for Bigger Pockets on the Market, presented by Fundrise. Fundrise.